G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a fun little tutorial that came to me as an idea through someone on Twitter that was talking about building tools that can inform you when scripts have finished running. In this case, they were sending themselves a message via Slack using a package called Dynaslack. Now, I don't actually use Slack myself in my own work, so I look for alternatives, and in this case, I decided to look at Outlook. Um, and after doing a bit of research, I found out there was actually some fairly straightforward commands in Python that can be used to trigger an email uh, from Outlook using Dynamo, which can support Python, essentially. So in this case, I'm gonna show you how you can use a node from my package Crumple. Um, there is another package called Mailman that I came across a little bit after uh, that does have some more advanced nodes that use zero touch features. Uh, mine, in my case, are Python, so you can, you can open them up and see how they work, which might be a little bit more beneficial to your learning. But if you do work at scale, maybe Mailman's more suitable. Um, but in this case, I'm going to show you how you can get starting messages, ending messages, um, essentially get yourself to be emailed through Dynamo at various stages as your script runs. Now this is more handy for scripts that take quite a while to run. Um, for example, maybe a really large batch task and you want to detect when the whole process is finished. Maybe it takes half an hour or thereabouts um, and you really need to know when your computer's available again. I do come across this quite a lot. So in this case, you will be, we'll, we'll need to use either Crumple or alternatively Mailman. Um, and hopefully we just we can send ourselves some emails. So let's jump straight in. Okay, um, so in this case, I'm gonna build a script that's gonna do two things. It's gonna send me an email when the script begins running. It's going to, in this case, um, instigate a delay using Python. So it's gonna tell the script to wait for about 20 seconds um, using a, a, an inbuilt delay function in the Python library. And in, in this case, we're then gonna send the notification when the script is finished. So I've got Outlook installed on my computer, obviously. I'm logged into my account and I have Outlook open. I believe that this needs to be the case if you run this particular node. There is a package called Mailman that's worth looking into, which is a little bit more of a sophisticated implementation, uh, but written in zero touch nodes. So you can't necessarily see how it all works on the surface. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna use uh, Crumple. So under Crumple, if you go to application, uh, Windows, uh, Outlook, send. Um, this is the node we're gonna be using today. So inside this node, there's a custom block of Python. Um, so the, the Python is in this case actually using a namespace from Microsoft, um, the interop Outlook namespace in this case. And in this case, we're essentially creating an item in Outlook to send and just defining some of the properties such as the subject and the body. Um, I did find a lot of this through just doing research on the forums. I didn't just find this all out myself through trial and error. Um, so, you know, really great to have all those forum resources available. Um, but aside from Mailman, which I'm aware of now, I didn't really find too many packages that have a Python-based implementation of this. So I was keen to include this in my package just to share it with other people. I think it's great to be able to see things in Python format sometimes. Anyway, in this case, uh, we are just gonna begin our script from here. So we're gonna send this to ourself. So in this case, I am gonna send this to my own email. Uh, for my subject, I'm just going to say uh, script has begun for the body. I'm going to say stage one. Now, it's already probably just went and sent me an email <laughs> straight away um, because I was in automatic mode. So do be aware that that's not necessarily maybe how you want it to run naturally. So in this case, in my inbox, it should come across quite shortly, I believe. I'll try running because I believe the subject and the body needed to be present in order for that to trigger. And there we go, we can see now I have an email, in this case, um, telling me the script has begun. So there it is. Um, obviously, you know, you're gonna wanna run in manual mode probably so that you don't get like all these separate instances of the email. As you can see, I did just uh, send myself quite a lot of copies of the, of the same thing in principle, uh, but we can see now we've got an email. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is tell my script to just wait for a bit. Because in a really complex script, you need heaps of nodes to do this. So I'm not going to go and build a really complicated script. In this case, I am going to run a node that you always need to use very carefully. Um, but I've built it in a more safe format, which in this case is under script flow. And I've built a node called delay, which tells the script to actually stop uh, when it reaches this node for a particular set of time. Now, it's very rare you're going to want to actually use a node like this. Um, probably the only practical case I have for it is when I'm writing something like a big file, like an Excel file, and I want Dynamo to actually just stop for a bit, let an external process run, and then keep working after. Because sometimes you can't predict how long those things will take in Dynamo, so you can't really go and access properties of something like that file. 
after it's been written. Um, so I use this node to tell Dynamo just to stop for a little while, just to be safe. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send through some data. So I'm going to be sending through the same email again. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to tell it to wait for maybe, hmm, in this case, uh, let's say, we'll wait for 10 seconds. And I'll set a threshold limit of 9, uh, of 11, sorry. So it can never take longer than 11 seconds. This stops someone putting in an accidental really large number, like 999, which would just essentially freeze Dynamo for quite a while, because we're putting time in seconds into the delay node. After this, the data is going to send through, and what I'm going to want to do after that is just send through the email again. So this is going to pass that email through, but only after the timer has finished. Again, in this case, I'm going to make another email, and I'll just say uh, Dynamo here, and I'll just say script has finished. So we should see uh, one email come through at the start, and then a delay, and then we should see Dynamo tell us the script has finished. Now you don't really need Dynamo to tell you when the script has begun, probably, you really just need to see when it's finished. But this is just to show that this actually sends the email when it hits the node, not when the script is finished running, which is really important. So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna just save and then reopen, just so that everything is refreshed in principle. So I'm gonna run, and this is gonna begin, and it should already be sending an email on the way, um, which should come through quite shortly which will tell me my script has begun. There's always a little bit of a delay through processing the item in Outlook itself, um, but it's nothing, I would say, too extreme. So we can say the script has begun, and now the script should be processing as it goes. And we can see the script is now finished. So on a really, really long script run, um, hopefully you would see a pretty no noticeable delay in time in those messages. Um, I could probably force a much larger one into there, um, in this case, I probably actually need to tell this to wait. So what I'm going to do is put in a wait for as well. And I'm going to tell my script to literally wait to start delaying until the email is sent. So I'm going to say in this case, this is my data. And I'm waiting until it's sent and then I'm sending it through after. So I'm putting in actually a controlled flow delay here to stop the data even entering that node. And I think this should get a, probably a more natural outcome in this case. So I'll run. And we should at some point get another notification that we've begun. And this time I think we'll see a bigger delay uh, between the start and the end. So the script has begun, um, it's hit the second delay, and we should see a, a noticeable gap between this and the next one at this point. So yeah, now we can see there's a much bigger delay. There we go. So I think that that's, um, that's much more evident that there is a fairly big uh, pause happening between them. Um, I, could, I could obviously go you know, all the way to something like half a minute. Um, obviously not the most exciting outcome, uh, but I guess if you really want to test it and just make sure. So ideally we should see the first email arrive whilst Dynamo is still running. Um, and then we'll probably see the second email when Dynamo has finished. So any time now, we should see, there we go, that the script has begun and Dynamo is still running. And then right at the end, we'll get a script has finished. So it's a really handy little function um, when you know that you don't want to be sitting at your desk for too long. Um, obviously, there's different ways to do this as well. You could do Slack, you could do MS Teams. So in this case, there's actually a package called DynaSlack uh, that someone has written, which is really dedicated to doing things like this. Um, and MS Teams, of course, has its own API you can access as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's as straightforward as Outlook. I'll probably try to build this into a package in future. Um, but otherwise, it looks like that's pretty much it. I'm just waiting for that final email to come through. There it is. Great. So um, if you were out at lunch, now you know that you can come back to the office and Dynamo will be finished and ready for you to start work again. So hopefully that was quite interesting and um, you enjoy finding ways to use this uh, in your everyday work. So that's all for today. I hope it's a useful technique. And in this case, we've used um, a Python namespace. So you could do this in something like Grasshopper as well if you wanted to. I'll be honest, I'd probably run more heavy scripts in Grasshopper that do take a while to finish, such as Ladybug scripts. And I will be using this there as well. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks, take care.